Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, and I'm really sorry for that. I've had a really rough few months, and I really burned myself out. But anyway, I'm back, and oh boy, I have some opinions. So once again, welcome back, or if you're new, welcome to my channel. So my name's Alex, and I illustrate things and I give my opinion on certain topics. They typically tend to be trending, sometimes they're just my opinion on something that popped up on my TikTok or something stupid like that. Today, I'm actually going to be talking about the ongoing situation with creep show art. So to get this out of the way, we're going to start off with some legal stuff. These are allegations only, so please remember that all of this is currently alleged. There is no 100% concrete proof right now. Also, please remember that the opinions expressed in this video aren't a reflection of the views of anybody else. They're my opinion. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to discuss Creepshow Art, what she's been accused of, and why I think her excuses are, to be frank, complete garbage. In order to get started, we are talking about, first off, who she is. So Creepshow Art, also known as Shannon, has been a large content creator on YouTube for quite some time and has been involved in a ton of drama. So we're talking going after Jeffree Star, she went after Lily Jean, she went after Hopeless Peaches, and her life seems absolutely insane. Like, she has confirmed on multiple occasions that she has been homeless, uh, she's lived out of her car for a very long period of time. Um, her fiancé has actually said two years. Fiancé, husband, boyfriend. I'm not sure exactly what their title is. I'm not looking into that too much because my time is worth more to me than that. She's also had people dox her in the past. And she's been the victim of several hate campaigns. Now, that is actually debatable, and I'll get to that in a few minutes as to why I don't really know if those hate campaigns are legitimate. Her story times were really popular, and her commentary is huge. And she's even featured other smaller artists on her channel with the justification that she could actually help them grow as creators. Now, I also don't necessarily think that's true either. So she has come under fire plenty of times, and as I said before, she has, you know, had some things happen in her life, allegedly. Now, there's not a whole lot of way to confirm some of these things. And she always seems to use that sympathy card when somebody decides to criticize her. She's used the fact that she's been homeless, she's used the fact that she's had to move house several times, she's claimed to have been doxxed by certain creators that she's commented on, and she's also commented that she's had a stalker for like eight years. Her story times are absolutely nuts, so either she's lived a more crazy life than Tana Mojo or something else is going on. Full disclosure here, I actually used to really like Creepshow Art. I thought she was interesting and that her content was good. She's actually part of the reason I decided to even consider going on YouTube. But as I consume more of her content, it got really problematic and I started to see a lot of issues with what she was saying. Her stories, which were already pretty sensational, were getting impossible to believe and she was saying a lot of things without evidence, which is something she's previously criticized other creators for. I really actually started to consume Emily Artful before I watched Creepshow Art, and Emily Artful is also a huge reason that I do what I do. It's actually because of Emily Artful that I chose to pursue art as a career. And honestly, I'm super happy with how that's going and all of that stuff, but I just wanted to get this out of the way that I did support Creepshow Art at one point and I currently support Emily Artful. So now that we have that out of the way, let's proceed. The LolCow posts dropped recently and they were absolutely insane. They were very devastating for Shannon, because now all the toxicity that she'd been experiencing, all the hate that came from the forums, it's entirely possible that a significant amount of the air quotes hate that Shannon had been receiving was actually from Shannon herself. That's absolutely nuts. Like, these posts were vitriolic, filled with rage, hate, and made withering comments about other creators and herself. Shannon has even been outed as a doxer, having released personal information about a family member. 
She's been very vocal in the past about not approving of doxing, thinking that it's gross and dangerous, especially since she's claimed to have been the victim of doxing in the past. I actually have some doubts based on Shannon's behavior, whether or not the doxing was legitimate or a ploy for sympathy points, but that's not necessarily relevant right now. Then Emily Artful dropped her video. And that was without a doubt one of the hardest things I've ever had to watch. What Shannon and her husband, boyfriend, fiance put Emily through, it's completely unforgivable. Shannon has routinely used the fact that she's been homeless to avoid criticism. She's indicated that she has a significant amount of trauma from her experience being homeless. Shannon was willing to inflict that on another person entirely to make their life miserable. And that is completely unacceptable, especially since Shannon is an advocate against that sort of thing, or she has claimed to be. Shannon is also demonstrated by the lol cow posts to have gone against some of her supposed core beliefs. So Shannon's made multiple videos about creators who are struggling with a particular ED. I am not going to say the name of the creator. You guys can look that up for yourself. But suffice it to say, it is a very popular creator, and, well, you'll know exactly who it is. She then turned around and was engaging in behavior that was attempting to trigger Emily's ED. Shannon has also spoken out against people using photos of others in compromising situations to extort them, and how it's not, well, it's completely disgusting behavior, to be frank, to hold somebody's explicit photos against them, especially when those photos are of a minor. Shannon, supposedly, allegedly, has access to Emily Artful's old Facebook account from when Emily was a lot younger, and has access to photos of Emily from when she was under the age of 18, saved in a photo bucket account. From what I understand, if Shannon still has that photo bucket account, this could be a federal crime, because it would be possession of intimate photos of a minor. Now, I'm not going to say the actual name for that because YouTube will immediately just, well, hit my video so hard with the algorithm that it's going to spin. But either way, Shannon has spoken out about this before and how it's disgusting and how nobody should do that and that it's not okay. And then Shannon was outed as a person who was engaging in this kind of behavior, which she herself has indicated is inappropriate. There are so many accusations, so many receipts in Emily's video. So if you haven't already watched the two hour video that Emily released, watch it. She goes into detail about what happened, why it might have happened, everything. Now, her screenshots and her receipts are to an extent circumstantial, but they're very convincing, especially given the time frames when things were happening, and also the differences in language between the two people who were writing, because it's very obvious that the personalities changed at one point, whereas one was really kind of creepy, I hate to say sounding like he idolized the Joker, but sounding like he idolized the Joker, and then all of a sudden it switched to this mean girl attitude. That's very indicative that at some point the person actually engaging in the behavior did change, and yeah, that would entirely scan with it being initially Shannon's partner, then switching over to being Shannon, who was actually the one engaging in this behavior. Emily's video highlighted another issue with Shannon, that she can and will attempt to turn the community against you if she feels threatened. Like what happened with Hopeless Peaches. Peaches actually was trying to speak out against Shannon and try to bring attention to the fact that Shannon is not who she seems to be and that basically creators should not trust her. Or at least that was my interpretation of the information that Peaches was giving at the time. Pe when Peaches spoke out, Shannon released information everywhere. She was really heavily slandering Peaches and trying to make everyone hate Peaches. That's super manipulative and completely unacceptable. We as creators shouldn't put other people through this. If we don't appreciate being treated in this way, it is not fair of us to do this to other creators, especially creators who may have some mental illness issues or may be struggling with something that we don't know. And it's really, really terrible behavior to use somebody's own illnesses against them. So Shannon has proven herself to be manipulative, abusive, and unbelievably untrustworthy. She's engaged in behavior that's totally and completely unacceptable. So the fact that she lied about all of this it shouldn't be surprising. 
and her attempts to cover her tracks really were very laughable. For context here, I'm going to let you know that I currently have a day job and it is in the IT field. So while this situation was happening, Shannon said that it was because her IP address was spoofed. I do not believe that for a single second. Once again, this is actually my day job to know this information. So Shannon was talking about the fact that the posts on LolCow were her stalker spoofing her IP. I'm actually going to address why that is just, in my opinion, beyond the realm of possibility here. When you go on a website, the server and your computer exchange information several times before the website's actual HTTPS information is displayed. So before the website actually comes up, there are multiple pings between your computer and the server. These happen in like milliseconds, it's super fast, but that needs to happen. So if you consider the fact that there is this exchange of packages, let's say, between your computer and the server, the IP address of your computer would be like the return address for a parcel if you're sending it out. So you send a parcel to the server, which in this case would be, let's use the allegory of you send a parcel to your friend who lives in another town. You don't have the right return address. So when your friend sends you something back, it goes to the wrong place and the connection can't be made. IP spoofing would basically cause the server to send information not back to the device that is doing the spoofing, but send the packet to the device being spoofed, which means that it wouldn't be able to load properly. IP spoofing is realistically only used in things like DDoS attacks or DDoS, where you're trying to overload a server while hiding your own information. So that's when an IP spoof actually is used because you're just trying to overwhelm the server with the initial request and then the server is trying to send things back and is not getting a reply. So the fact that Shannon is claiming that an anonymous person on an anonymous website spoofed her IP to try to pretend to be her is simply not something that would be even within the realm of possibility. The only way that that would happen is like you're talking NSA super hacker level of complexity and setup that would be required to even attempt this. And LolCow is anonymous. So I have no idea why anybody would even attempt to do that, let alone rapidly approach NSA super hacker territory to try to make Shannon look a little bad on the internet. That doesn't make sense. That's not how IP spoofing works. That is not how any of this works. And anybody with any degree of technical literacy most likely knows that that is not how this works. So it was laughable to me when she said that. Now, another thing to address is how did LolCow actually get her IP and her device information? Well, the, that answer is really simple. You know the cookies on your phone that you sometimes have to clear on a website? That's how they get that data. A cookie, for lack of a better word, is hard data that's stored on your computer that gets sent to the website during the connection process, which is like your saved preferences and stuff like that. So, you know, like your passwords and the way that things are set up. So if you like light mode or dark mode, otherwise the website would not have a reference for that. So the fact that Shannon's IP matched, the fact that Shannon's devices, which she has confirmed that she owns, match and the fact that everything kind of comes up to the times that she has confirmed she is in places because Shannon doesn't exactly hide her whereabouts she tells people like the name of the library she was at which is where one of the IPs was traced to the city she's in which is where the uh, the other IPs were traced to and the devices used indicate that those were likely Shannon, in addition to the fact that her writing style is very specific. So unless somebody finds a way to completely impersonate the way she writes, which by the way, even ghost writers can't fully do that, and they do that for a living, I highly doubt that Shannon is in any way telling the truth about, you know, having been hacked, having been impersonated, because that's not how IP spoofing works. It's not like phone spoofing or email spoofing. 
which even then, if you send an email to a spoofed email address, it send it reroutes it. So it just doesn't work. What Shannon is saying simply cannot be true in this case. This is from my experience. So a more experienced IT professional, if there is one lurking in my video, which if there is, hi, hello, how did you get here? Please feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here. But I don't think this is possible or probable. But either way, we're going to have to move on a little bit. I would also like to point out that Spockter actually covers this in a little bit more depth. So go check out Spockter's video because Spockter does actually break this down a little bit more. Just have a look. It's a good video. It's high quality. Just, well, there's some good memes in there too, which to me is essential. So we have now addressed why Shannon's claims are, in my opinion, complete and utter garbage. Like, they just, they don't make sense. Now I'm going to get a little bit more personal here. There is a particular reason that what Shannon has done to other creators on this platform is, in my opinion, the lowest of the low, completely unacceptable, and just we should not be engaging with her content or her in any way or consider anything she has said as truthful. What Shannon has put other creators through is unforgivable. She has stabbed people in the back. She's put them in dangerous situations for their physical and mental health. She's made people live on the street. She's made people live in fear for their physical safety, for their family's safety. Emily has children. And Shannon and her husband, partner, boyfriend, fiance, whatever he is, made her fear for the life of her family. That is beyond unacceptable. I have lived through a similar situation to that. I have had an ex who was unbelievably violent, who I was afraid of, who I am still afraid of to this day. I know how terrifying that can be. How devastating it can, it can destroy you. It can make you not want to go outside, not want to talk to people. It can cut you off from your friends and your family. You feel so isolated, so alone. It's not okay. I know what it's like to be stalked. I know what it's like to be afraid of your ex-partner breaking into your home and hurting your family. I know how long that stays with you. I've even had to deal with an ex, with, an, with my ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend, harassing me and threatening me after, after we had broken up, after his restraining order finally expired. Yeah, I had a restraining order against him, and the second it expired, his girlfriend was harassing me and trying to make my life a living hell. So I understand better than most what Emily is going through and I cannot in any way understand why somebody else would put a person through that and why, how you could stand by and let that happen. I cannot begin to express how disgusted I am with Shannon, how absolutely horrified I am by her behavior and I do not think that she deserves any hate because of this, I think she deserves to be ignored. We all need to acknowledge the situation, but we need to understand that she is not a good person. She is very toxic. She has shown that, and we should not be supporting her any further. So I know that got personal. I know that got dark for a minute, and I do apologize for that. Please go show Emily Artful, D'Angelo Wallace, Hopeless Peaches, Ready to Glare, Omnia, Timimi, Holly Brown, everybody that Shannon has tried to go and hurt or she's talked smack about, go show them some love. They deserve it. They deserve to see that fact that this community can really be loving and caring. They don't deserve what she put them through, so please show them that there is some positivity. 
don't send Shannon hate. Be the bigger person. Don't engage with her content, but do not send her hate. Don't feed into what she's thinking. Don't feed into the self-pitying narrative she seems to so believe. I'm going to take a second, and then I'll be back to uh, sign out. Sorry about that. Editing Alex here. So that's it for the video today. I know that that got very personal and very dark, and I do apologize for that. I just very much needed to explain why this situation is so absolutely upsetting to me and why I cannot in any good conscience justify supporting anything that Creepshow Art is doing. So once again, thank you very much for sticking around. So the sticker that I've designed for this video can be found and purchased at my Etsy shop, and the link for that is going to be in the description below, as well as the link for my social media and the link to the lolcow posts. I will be including that in the description. So thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. I do plan on uploading more videos more consistently throughout the summer, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, grow together. So once again, thanks very much, and uh, sorry to borrow this, Emily, but stay out of trouble.